What's up guys, DT here and welcome back to another episode of Tone Quest. In today's episode, we'll be dialing in the massive tone from Andy James as played on the awesome track After Midnight from his arrival CD. So let's get right into it. Now before we begin, as always, it's time for this video's honorable mention. So I want to thank Kindness and Jose Martin. I hope I got your names right for making a contribution towards the channel through my PayPal account. And in case you are wondering how you can support the channel and get a shout out on the future videos, check the description box for more details. All right, as we always do, let's start with some background around the tone. Now, please don't skip this section as it will give you clarity around the choices that I make later in the preset buildup. So make sure you stick around for the entire video. Now, Andy is a beast of a player and most of his massive tone comes from his clean and precise playing and picking but there's always more to it than just the playing, right? So as with every preset, I went around looking for clues around the gear Andy might have used to get this tone, and here are some of my key findings. First of all, Andy's lead tones are usually quite mid-focused, thick and smooth, and that's the kind of tone we're looking to dial in today. Second, Andy pretty much used his Kemper, which has his PV6505 amp profiled for this record. Also, his presets are available for the Kemper and the XFX via STL as of today, but I haven't tried them out, just not to get biased. As for the cab though, I think he used a 4x12 Mesa oversized cab, but I think any 4x12 V30 cab would sound great. Now, Andy has a unique pick attack and he prefers his signal chain setup in a specific way for his unique sound. He usually prefers a drive pedal before the amp to achieve a boost and to tighten the low end as well, but he likes to do it in a specific way. For the STL pack, I believe he used the Maxon OD pedal for the drive boost. Now one final thing, Andy loves playing on the neck pickup and this is yet another key factor towards his signature sound. I believe he used to use EMGs as his main pickups earlier but I think he uses Kiesel polarity pickups as of today. Now with all that said, please keep in mind that there is much more that goes into tone and this is just my interpretation of his tone and it's nowhere perfect and exact to what Andy might have used. So with that said, let's jump into the axe edit and let's dial it in. Alright guys, as always, I've got X edit loaded in front of me and what I've got is a blank preset in there. This is the way we usually do things on this channel. We start off with a blank preset and dial in block by block and construct the tone from scratch. For reference, I'm playing my Uniball Music Man JP15 guitar. Everything is 100% stock on this guitar. I haven't modified anything. I am on the bridge pickup. I was on the neck, I switched to the bridge. I am on the bridge pickup, the tones on full, the volumes on full, this is how the guitar sounds. That sounds lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> of course it doesn't. Let's go ahead and make it sound lovely. So what we're gonna do is dial in block by block like we always do. So the first block we're gonna dial in is the amp block and as I mentioned in section one, did you miss it? Just go ahead and watch it. You'll understand why I'm choosing this amp. The amp is going to be a PV6505, which is what I think Andy used, which was profiled into his camper while he made when he recorded the track, I think. So let's go ahead and choose the amp. Now there are a lot of amps available from the PV uh, series in the Axe FX2. You've got the 5150 and the 6160 as well. These numbers always confuse me and I don't know the logic behind these numbers, but I believe there's a lot of good history behind these amps. Go ahead and read the post from Yek on these amps and you'll understand much more around these amps as to what each of them mean. Like this one is called the PVH6160 block letter, but I believe this is 6505, so we're gonna use it. Why is it called the block letter? Again, read that post from Yek, you'll understand more. So we'll use that amp, keep everything at stock, and let's go ahead and add in the cab as well. Now, as I mentioned for the cab, he might have used a 4x12 oversized Mesa cab, as I read from the spec sheets from the Kemper profiles, uh, but we're gonna use a different one. We're gonna use something which has also a V30 sort of a speaker implementation. We're gonna use the F051 4x12 Uber V30 uh, cab, which is a Bachner cab, I believe. Let's use that and also mic it up with the RE16 dynamic mic. I think this is an electro voice model of a dynamic mic. So let's go ahead and add that. Let's keep everything at stock and let's hear how the tone sounds at this moment. Again, on the bridge pickup, this is how it sounds. <laughs> Now 
that sounds pretty nice out of the box itself keep in mind i haven't tweaked anything at the moment but it sounds a little sharp to my ears we need something which is more mid heavy and more smoother and less sharp so let's go ahead and tweak the amp and let's get that sort of a tone that we want now for the amp this amp has a lot of drive in there so what i did is actually brought down the drive quite a bit around 3.5 um, this will make much more sense when we add in the drive pedal as well but for now let's keep it at 3.5 the bass i'm going to bring it down to around 2.7 or 3.7 i think let's do that uh, mids we need a lot of more mids so we're going to add in a uh, fair amount of mids around 6.62 uh, my guitar is also mid focused quite mid based i think so if you want more mids you can definitely tweak this up treble presence and depth i did not touch because as i said they sounded quite nice where they are uh, i didn't want it, the preset to be much more brighter or sharper by any means so i kept them at stock the master volume is another tricky knob as it is with most of the amps in the XFX2. If you pump it up too much around 10, it's going to sound quite muddy and flubby and it's going to lose character. So I think that's one of the reasons why it probably loads up at 4 by default. I brought it even down for the 3 kind of feels like a sweet spot for me and I think it works really well at that particular point. Level, I'm going to compensate since I brought down the master volume quite down so let's bring up the level to around minus 8.8 .8. cab also i'm going to tweak a few things um low cut i'm going to push it up to 80 and the high cut i'm going to bring it down to 80 50 this is going to cut off some of that top end but also go into the room section and add in a bit of air this kind of simulates the real sound of an amp uh, you've seen this you, you've seen me do this countless number of times use headphones you will get a better idea as to what you're doing so 11034 is kind of the frequency that feels nice to my ears when it comes to this tone and i added around 10 percent of air so with that done this is how it sounds now <laughs> That sounds fat and that sounds smooth that's the kind of tone we want next thing i'm going to add the drive pedal now as i mentioned in section one again he probably used a maxon overdrive pedal for this uh for the drive section or the drive pedal to be honest but we don't have that in the xfx2 now the maxon od is based on the tsn9 architecture i think and you can use t808 or t808 mod in the xfx2 but i went ahead with a different approach and i used a different technique to Kind of simulate the uh, maxon overdrive pedal i read a forum post on the xfx2 forums and i've uh, kind gentleman recommended that we use the fas boost pedal in here to kind of simulate that now the way andy likes to set up his drive pedal is that he'll have zero drive and his level would be all the way up to 10. tone would be around five but for our case we'll push it up to seven since we are emulating a pedal uh high cut i'm going to bring it down to 1100 the clip type not 200 1100 please and the clip type i'm going to change it from silicon to 4558 diode uh, somewhere there's a lot of logic behind all of this but it escapes me i just copied it from somebody from the fractal forum so please don't ask me why i did this but yeah so the base i brought it down to minus two mid frequency change it to 520 and mids i'm going to push it up quite a bit around five and treble i pushed it up to around seven so with that done let's switch to the neck pickup and play a part and see how it sounds <laughs> That sounds really smooth and it's added a bit of more character to the amp as well i hear a bit of a nasalness as well in the tone which is in my opinion always good to have so that's probably because we're pushing the mids quite a lot over here and it acts kind of like a filter as well sometimes so uh without that this is how it sounds <laughs> With it this is how it sounds 
So you can feel that it adds a bit of ring to the amp, it pushes the amp a little bit more, and I think in my opinion, it kind of you know tightens up the low end as well, so which is always good. Next block that we added is actually a chorus block. Completely optional, I do hear some modulation in the actual playthrough. I like it with a digital stereo in there. Uh, the tempo is going to be set to 170 or 85, whichever way you like it. I set the tempo of the chorus to one dot. Where are you one dot? Here you are. Uh, mix, I brought it down quite low, 8.9%. As I said, not too much chorus in there. Um, dimension mode set to high in the tone block, tone section of the chorus block, and the high cut, I brought it down to around 12,800. We don't want too much top end coming in coming out. So with that done, this is how it sounds. That sounds nice. But obviously it sounds quite empty and it's got a lot of blank places in there because the playing is quite melodic and it's not like really shreddy fast. So you need a lot of delay in there and a lot of reverb in there to kind of fill it up. And that's what I hear in the record as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and add the delay block in as well. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of more tone breakdowns like this on the channel. So make sure you go ahead and check it out. All right, let's add the delay block in there. So we're gonna choose delay and what I chose actually is a digital stereo. Uh, no, sorry, not that. I think I chose a dual delay. And keep in mind, this is just my implementation of the delay. Andy could have used something completely different, but I feel that this kind of does the thing for me. If you wanna change it to some other type of delay, please feel free to go ahead and do that. So tempo left, I set it to around half a dot and tempo right, I set it to one fourth of a dot. Uh, feedback, again, I pushed it up to 28% and around 35% right. Again, all by ear, nothing very fancy going on in here completely by taste. Uh, mix, I pushed it up to 21.7. So I want a lot of delay and a lot of reverb repeats kind of following my main playing during those melodic sections. But keep in mind when you do that, what's gonna happen is that since you've got such a high mix and such high feedback, what's gonna happen is that your playing is gonna get a little bit muffled up. Uh, example, let's hear this part. <laughs> getting muddled up, muddled up and how it's getting all muffled up with the actual playing and it's not very clear. Two ways to solve this problem, you can use a ducking delay or you can use the EQ trick that I always like to do. Let's go into the EQ section and let's bring down the high cut of the actual delays to around 1400. You can see that the top end is getting chopped off and what that's gonna do is make the delay repeats kind of sit in the background. So let's hear the same part again. <laughs> really nice and smooth and I think the delay follows the main playing quite smoothly as well. Uh, last block I think I added was a reverb. Now this is something that could have been added in post while the mix or maybe Andy had it in his camper as well. I'm not sure but I like it with a reverb. You can switch it off if you don't like it. Medium hall does the trick for me here. Quality set to high, time set to three seconds and mix set to around 30% which is quite a lot of uh, reverb to be honest so let's hear how this sounds with the reverb on now Anyways, you get the idea. Let's play another part and see how it sounds.
Well, 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 that's it. That's the preset. You know where to find the preset and how to download it. But before you go ahead and grab it, please do spend a couple of seconds to smash that like button and leave me a comment as to what you think about the tone and what would you do differently if you were dialing in this tone. As always, thank you for your support and I shall see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe everyone. Keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.